I've been on the board of the Innocence Project for just about 25 years in various different aspects of criminal justice reform for equally as long. I'm very proud and humbled to have been a part of helping to prevent death sentences to be carried out. There are countless people doing hard time in American prisons for crimes they didn't commit. I've interviewed dozens of them for my podcast, and now we're bringing these powerful human stories to your screens. I'm the host of the podcast, Wrongful Conviction, with Jason Plum. I started my podcast about three years ago. I thought if I can help exonerees share their stories and in so doing help to prevent even one wrongful conviction from happening in the future, then let's do that. You know, the alibis that you had that were uh, basically airtight yes. never made it in front of a jury. Sure, right. I interviewed Raymond Santana of the Central Park Five, Brendan Dassey, Amanda Knox. She's appeared on Wrongful Conviction. We also work together bringing awareness to these issues. She's a wonderful advocate, a wonderful public speaker, just a beautiful person, and I'm lucky to have her in my life. After your conviction was overturned, you remained in prison for several years. I remained in jail for over three, three and a half years. We all agree that the system isn't perfect. It's far from it. And we owe it to our fellow Americans to fix this problem that we call mass incarceration. Please welcome Jason Flom. <clears throat> Jason, you've been at this for over 25 years now, and you've talked to so many of these people, some still in, some that have been exonerated, and there are some commonalities among these cases. We see a number of common threads through these wrongful convictions, um, including false confessions, as in Brendan Dassey's case, including tunnel vision, official misconduct, uh, <laughs> eyewitness misidentification is the number one leading cause of wrongful convictions. Those are just some of the factors. And you've gotten 30, 40 people out of prison that were convicted and ultimately were exonerated, and that's gotta feel good. I mean, all humility aside, that's gotta feel good. Oh, there's no better feeling that I know. I mean, you saw in the clip there, I, I walked Lenny Singleton out of prison, and uh, you know, it's just, it's an unbelievable feeling to know that you can have that type of an impact on somebody's life. And to your great credit, you know, what you're doing for Rodney is transformative. I mean, nothing less. And it's, 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 it's incredible to see the outpouring of support from people in your audience, uh, among so many others, who have, you know, learned about this horrible injustice from you and now, <laughs> and then taken action and signed. What we, how many signatures do we have on the petition now? Millions. About three million. Three, three million strangers who are coming yeah. and, and making their voice heard. <laughs> 